friends, nice to see you again, or if you're new here, welcome to Everything L, where I talk about mostly books, but sometimes other stuff too. I have done a 2020 reading recap. I have done my favorites of 2020, so it only makes sense that we've got to talk about the books that were disappointing in 2020. 2020 failures if you will. We had quite a few, but I did narrow it down to five of my most disappointing reads. Obviously, you know, I don't need to say this, but I'm gonna put it out there anyways. If these are your favorite books, I am not hating on you, okay? This was just my personal opinion. As always, these books are in no particular order. First up, we have Blood Air by Emily Wen Zhao, and this was a honest Anastasia Romanov retelling, which I kind of did get the vibes, but I don't think it was super, super connected. My issue with this book, the plot just felt very bleh to me, considering that there was a murder and we got a girl running for her life. And there was even like a witty romance in there and that wasn't even enough to save it for me. The characters just didn't click with me. I, I, I didn't care about the characters. In Blood Air, we have a princess who is able to control blood, but not really. She doesn't have a good handle on it and it has deadly consequences when she does lose control. Because of this, her father, the emperor, has worked to keep that ability a secret. However, when he is murdered, Anastasia is the prime suspect and so she is forced to flee the castle and ally herself with a crime lord in order to find the true murderer. So that all sounds great and dandy, but it wasn't enough. It, I, I, I wasn't into it. I just wasn't into it, sadly. Next, which is one that definitely made me really sad that I didn't love more, was Unbirthday by Liz Braswell, and this is part of the Disney Twisted Tales series, and obviously this focuses on Alice in Wonderland, and I love Alice in Wonderland. It is my favorite classic, favorite fairy tale. I love it. I wanted to love this book so badly. I just didn't love the characters enough. I feel like if I can't root for at least one character, like the book reading experience is just so much more sad. And this one I took personally because I wanted to love it. Alice, main character Alice, it was just, this girl is supposed to be 18 years old, but the way we were reading, the way her voice sounded, I mean, it felt like I was reading from a 12 year old's point of view. I don't know. I just, I didn't love it. That's all I gotta say about that. I also read a, another retelling reimagining that unfortunately I really did not like and that was Dust by Kara Swanson. This is the first book in the Heirs of Neverland duology, I believe. I didn't really like anything in this book. I gave it a two stars, but I think even that was being generous. I think I just didn't want to give it a one star, but let's see. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the writing. The plot was meh. Maybe that's why I gave it a two stars. The plot was like, okay, I don't know what's happening and I want to know what's happening. So I guess he got me there. Dust deals with Peter Pan who has fallen out of grace from Neverland. Another character has taken over and has control of his Lost Boys, but not really control because the Lost Boys willingly are supporting this other character and are shunning Peter Pan. Apparently Peter Pan did something horrible and caused the Lost Boys to lose faith in him. And so Peter Pan is walking the streets of London, I believe, looking for a particular person who could help him. I don't know if it's because I don't love Peter Pan, I'm gonna be honest, I've never even seen the Disney movie Peter Pan, but I just, the writing, and unfortunately I didn't write any notes on what exactly about the writing I didn't like, but it just, I think it was just very choppy, like it didn't, I don't know, it didn't flow as nicely for me. Sadly, that's all I got for you. Next, which I also wanted to love just because this cover is absolutely stunning, but House of Dragons by Jessica Clues. This is actually a book that my fiance pointed out to me at Barnes & Noble. The cover is just, ooh, 
beautiful like mysterious it just looks good i was really close to purchasing it but i wasn't sure if the dragon aspect of it was going to throw me off because i don't think i've ever read a book that focuses on dragons where dragons are a major element in it so therefore i decided to read it through my library first and then figured if i love it i'll purchase it and i can reread it all the time unfortunately it just fell a little flat for me. House of Dragons, the emperor of this land has recently died and so each of the five royal families gets to send their eldest child in to compete for the position of emperor. Right from the beginning things start to go off course. Things are not proceeding the way they are supposed to. The dragon aspect was actually really really cool. Each of the five royal families kind of had their signature dragon, their unique dragon with unique abilities specific to that family or to that region and that was actually really cool. I actually really enjoyed it. Oh well, I wish there was like a really good written book about dragons like this. I feel like the plot wasn't executed as well as it could have. I think at the beginning the competition between the characters was really intriguing and very exciting for me but then as the book proceeded things just started getting I don't want to say boring but it just started seeming like it was too linear. Not a lot was happening and then at the end you know crap hit the fan but it felt a little too late for me. So the ending was a big disappointment even though I somewhat decently was okay with the first part of the book. The ending just kind of lost me and because of that this is one where I'm not sure if I'm going to continue the series or not because I was really really disappointed in the ending. I mean throughout the entire book I was kind of do I like this? Do I not like this? Do I like this? Do I not like this? And then the ending was yeah I don't like this but the dragon aspect ah. So this book really tears me because it was disappointing but it did have some good points. Finally, the last book I'm going to mention is Set Fire to the Gods by Sarah Rash and Kristen Simmons and this book seemed to have everything going for it in terms of my enjoyment. This book takes place in a world where we have elemental nations run by gods and goddesses like actually live gods and goddesses, immortal gods and goddesses. They have prevented having world wars by settling disputes in the gladiator arena. So each nation has their champion that they set out whenever they have disputes and the survivor, the one who is left breathing, is who wins that dispute. So you could understand why some people would have a bit of a grudge with that. One of our main characters, Ash, her mother dies in the arena. She is killed and it is not exactly a clean fight, if you know what I'm saying. So she is very upset and actually is very angry at her own god, the fire god, and so she decides that she needs to come up with some kind of revenge plan. However, in her grief and anger, she causes a dispute with the earth nation. So now the fire gladiators are traveling to the earth nation to have a big series of gladiator fights to define who wins this dispute. They start to find out some secrets some things that are not exactly totally above board in this world. On the Earth Nation side, we follow Matic, our secondary main character, and he is a not exactly a full-fledged gladiator champion. He fights in like lower arenas to like qualify for champion. However, Matic is not actually an earthbender, which is a requirement for being a champion, but no one around him knows that, so he's kind of cheating a bit in his battles. So Matic catches the eye of a scout for the gladiator champions. Obviously with this big fight against the Fire Nation coming along, they're trying to gather their best fighters to send out, but 
Obviously, Matic is not an earthbender, so this causes some problems for him. Again, one that I feel should have been so much more than it was, and I do feel like this is partially maybe my fault. I really hyped up this book in my head. I heard about this book even before it released, so it was one that I was really excited for. I thought, wow, like this is gonna be kick ass. And it was not kick ass. That could just be my fault. I hyped it up and it was a good book. It just wasn't where I wanted it to be. The characters I wanted to feel for Ash, even like Maddox has some really crappy things that happened to him and I really wanted to feel for them, but I the connection just wasn't there. I really don't think I'm going to continue this book because it is part of an ongoing series but I'm not sure because there are some of like mystery dealings happening that I would like to know how that turns out but I don't know guys. I don't know if I have it in me. Those are the books that disappointed me in 2020. Obviously reading is subjective as many things are in life. These are just my thoughts and opinions. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Do you agree? with my opinions? Do you think I'm wrong? Like do I need to go back and reread them? Let me know if you've read any of these books and you think I just need to give them a second chance. That wraps up my end of year videos and now we can fully focus into 2021. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. My name is Elle. Let's read some great books this year and I'll see you in next time's video. Thank you.